Hey guys, my name is Teresa from the blog and YouTube channel freetoflower.com and today I want to answer some of your most frequently asked questions about baking sourdough bread. These are going to be all the things that I struggled with when I first started baking sourdough bread three plus years ago and that actually made me give up baking sourdough at least three different times where I concluded that I just don't know how to do it and I don't have the necessary skills or the time to figure this out. I did not come across this information that I'm about to share with you now back when I started and I'm pretty confident that if I had heard what I'm about to tell you now, I would have stuck with it longer and I would have been baking this beautiful poofy sourdough bread that I'm able to make now and I do make a couple times a week for my family much, much sooner. So first of all, I wanna say it is completely normal to have failed sourdough. I had so many months of failed sourdough, a couple separate different times. And at the beginning, I could not figure out why this is happening. I was following all the recipes, I was reading all the guides, I was watching all the videos, and I could not figure out where I'm going wrong and why this is not working out for me. So let's dive right in. I'm going to cover all the areas that I wish I knew when I first started. And I hope these are gonna help you to also have amazing, poofy, delicious, homemade sourdough bread for you and your family much sooner than I did. The first thing we need to talk about is your sourdough starter. This is the basic ingredient of your bread and while all the ingredients are important, the starter is especially important. The first thing you want to check is that your sourdough starter is really nice, active, and bubbly. As you can see on my starter, there are so many bubbles on top. It roasts quite a bit. It just looks very alive. Now I know there are all these things out on the internet where you put a rubber band over here, then you track how much it rises. And I used to be obsessed about this. And let me just tell you, it really doesn't matter so much. What matters more than if your starter doubled or not is whether it is active. Mine has actually already been sitting for probably 15 hours at this point, so it's starting to kind of fall a little bit. It's a little bit more watery than I would like. When I woke up this morning, it was really nice and up there and risen and kind of had this airy quality to it, and that is what I'm going for. I no longer track whether it doubles or not. Sometimes it won't and sometimes it will and those times that it does, it'll make your bread even that much better. But hey, your bread is still gonna be great even on the days when the starter doesn't quite double. The second thing that is so important and that I feel like not enough people talk about is whether your starter is mature enough to bake bread. What does this mean? If you just made your sourdough starter for the first time, it's rising beautifully, but it's only maybe a couple weeks old, it is not mature enough to make bread. You can use the discard to make all sorts of other recipes. You can make delicious pancakes, you can make a bunch of different things, but your bread is probably going to turn out flat. And I had to learn this the hard way. I did not see information about this. I'm sure it's out there. It just didn't come up in the beginner guides that I read and articles and videos I watched. You need to let your starter mature, which means just discarding it daily and feeding daily for at least, for me, a couple months. So when I started my starter from scratch last year, it took about two months of daily feedings for it to be mature enough to make really beautiful poofy bread. It can happen faster than that, I'm sure. This is the time it took for me. I think I had a few segments there but I put it in the fridge for a week or so, so that probably slowed down my progress. If you're doing everything right, or you feel like you're doing everything right, and your bed is still turning out flat, and your starter is not that old, this is likely the reason why. This is why it's so practical to get starter from somebody else if you're starting your own. Now you can start your own, but you are gonna have to wait no matter what. Even if it looks like it's amazingly active, it's not mature enough yet. So find a friend that can gift you a little bit of their starter discard. Find a place online where you can even buy it or a local store. I think it's worth the time savings. This was probably the biggest obstacle that I had in my bread baking and that made me give up the first two times is because I did not realize that I had to wait this amount of time and keep feeding my starter in order for it to make great bread. Next 
point to consider is the flour that you're using. This is my super cute flour container. Flour makes a huge difference, especially if your starter is pretty new and pretty young. It depends what flour you're feeding it. If you're feeding it one type of flour and then you wanna make bread with a different type of flour, an immature starter especially or younger starter can really struggle with that. So at the beginning, if you really want to keep everything as controlled as possible and raise your odds of baking grade bread, stick to the same type of flour. If you want to boost your starter, it is great to switch to whole wheat or even home milled flour. Whole milled flour always makes my bread amazing, but make sure to get your ratios right. Experiment with how much home milled whole wheat flour you can include. Do not make 100% whole wheat whole milled bread. You can, it's just going to be a little bit flatter, a little bit more dense. If you want that poofy artisan look sourdough bread, you want to combine it with just all-purpose flour but including that even in your sourdough starter feedings time to time is going to boost things for you next is dough consistency this is once again something that i really struggled with at the beginning i followed all the recipes to the t and my dough was turning out differently than the dough in the pictures and my bread was not turning out great it turns out it's really an individual thing. You have to adjust recipes a little bit for a number of reasons. Number one, your sourdough starter probably has a different hydration level than the persons that you're reading the recipe of. What this means is it's just a little bit more runny than the starter that the person who wrote the recipe is using, or maybe it's a little bit more thick. Also, just the type of flour makes a huge difference and even geographical location and humidity in the air. Basically, all the elements can influence this. I've seen this because I baked sourdough bread in Texas, USA. I baked sourdough bread in Brazil and now I'm baking sourdough bread in Europe. The recipes that I use, I always try to use the same ones and they do not work the same across all those areas. So you always have to watch your dough consistency and be prepared to be a little bit flexible and add in flour or water, but adding in flour is easier, into your KitchenAid while it's working as needed. So if you see that the dough is really sticky and kind of runny, add in some flour. If you see that it is way too thick, and it is not coming together nicely, add a little bit of water. Next step is fermentation time. So all these recipes say, you know, let your bread sit at room temperature for eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours. Well, newsflash, everybody's room temperature is different and room temperature is different, different times of year. So for me, this was a massive issue because I followed this recipe of somebody who lived, let's say in Texas, and I am here in Europe and it's the dead of winter <laughs> and my room temperature is completely different than theirs. Even if I expanded the fermentation time, what felt like by hours, my dough was still not rising. This all got fixed when I got my fermentation box, my proofing box. I kid you not, this has been the biggest game changer to my sourdough game after finding out about the mature starter thing. I am now able to completely control the temperature at which my sourdough ferments year round. The other week, I completely forgot to feed my sourdough starter in order to make pizza for pizza night on Friday. So I quickly fed it, I put it in my proofing box, I turned up the temperature, yanked it all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius. My starter was ready to go in three hours or two hours. <laughs> then I quickly made the dough for our pizza, put it in there, yanked up the temperature again, and I made it on time for dinner on pizza night on Friday. If I didn't have this really nifty piece of equipment, I would have never been able to do this. But on top of that, I would constantly have to be adjusting proofing times and fermentation times, different times of year, but even different days. Today, I'm filming this on June 1st. I'm wearing a sweater and I probably need a jacket to go outside. It is chilly today. But last week we had some really warm days. I would have to completely change the fermentation times for my dough from last week to today. That is not great for planning. That is not great for anything. So I love that I just can keep everything constant thanks to my proofing box. This way I know that at this specific temperature, my bread needs exactly this amount of time to proof and then I can proceed with the next steps. So if your bread is turning out flat, chances are it's not rising enough 
which probably means your temperature is too low in your house. You need to give it more time or you need to raise temperature. I have tried doing this in the oven. It never worked well for me. I tried doing all sorts of different methods that people recommend. I even tried the Instapot. I tried so many different things and none of them worked for me until I got my proofing box. It's also possible that your room temperature is too high and then your bread is turning out flat because it's overproofed. The way you'll know the difference between the two is if it's overproofed, the dough is really watery. It's super hard to work with. You kind of, it kind of spills out of your bowl when you tip it out onto your work surface rather than just plopping out nicely all together. You need to add lots of flour to give it some consistency. It's really hard to handle. On the other hand, if it's not proofed enough, it is just really solid. There's no air bubbles and mostly you don't get this beautiful, look at this rise. You see how really nice and poofy this is? I'm not gonna touch it too much so that I don't destroy my bread before it goes in the oven. That is what you want to see. So you can't leave it too long, you can't leave it too little, but I promise you there is so much room for error. It is really forgiving. So like even 30 minutes, even an hour, probably is not gonna make a huge difference. Now a couple hours will. An hour each way is probably gonna be fine as long as you know roughly what the times are in your environment. I recommend getting a proofing box. I'm gonna link the one I use in the description box below. Scoring. I have a whole video on how to score sourdough bread. I'm gonna link it up above so you can go watch that. But scoring makes a huge difference to how your bread turns out. If you don't score enough, it'll kind of get our crackly and not look as pretty and not get that nice rise. So make sure to invest in a scoring knife. I'm gonna link the one that I use down in the description box below. It makes all the difference from just using a regular knife. And then you can also just get creative and create nice designs and kind of change it up every single time. Or you can stay really basic. Just make sure that you're scoring the bread deeply enough to allow it to rise properly. Once again, you can watch my video on that. And lastly, baking temperature. Make sure if you're using a Dutch oven to preheat it for an hour to keep the temperature pretty high for the first 15 minutes of baking when you're baking your bread covered. Now, if you're wondering about my bread recipe, I have one up on my blog. I'm gonna link it down in the description box below so you can go take a look at that, print it out, you know, read it, whatever you need to do. The temperature needs to be pretty high for the first 15 minutes and then you can turn it down a little bit lower for the second 15 to 20 minutes that your bread doesn't burn. But if it's not properly preheated and the temperature isn't high enough, your bread is not gonna rise and you're not gonna have that beautiful, poofy, artisan sourdough bread. Those are the top things that I wish I knew when I first started baking sourdough. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I can make another video where I answer all of your questions, or maybe you have questions that you now know answers to, but you wish you would have had those answers when you first started. I would love to know what they are so I can make a part two of sourdough troubleshooting. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoy following along our simple life on our European farm, cooking from scratch, raising animals, and all that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button and I will see you next week.